Today on the Tabby Show, Biden Kamala inflation statistics go viral. Trump foreshadowing a market crash under the Biden Harris campaign goes viral as well. Biden proposes a ban on the AR-15 universal background checks for everyone and removing protection to bankrupt all gun manufacturers. Ohio Sixth Circuit court rules that schools can punish children for misgendering other students. Museum of Pop advertising campaign has a drag camp for kids. London, well, their camera roll from 1960s was viral for having basically no crime. Warren Buffett sold half of his Apple stock. Toyota Corolla GR will, in fact, have an option for automatic transmission. And Charles Schwab and Fidelity have a major outage again. All of that and much more on The Topping Show. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Today's episode of The Topping Show is proudly sponsored by Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value-added resource and services company with a special proficiency in IT security. Heck, I see their founder at least twice a day. Gotta say he's quite handsome and brilliant. He's me. You see, that's a joke. If you're an IT leader or a business owner, you can reach out to the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So, if you can click that button and tell your friends, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, going over to the business part of the podcast, you have Warren Buffett sold half of his Apple stock after being a stalwart of the brand for years and making a pretty penny, of course. Now, this brought to us thanks to CNN, which, interestingly enough, still has... I was about to say one or two good writers. Let's be honest, probably just one, but only partially kidding. Pulling up the article right now, it's coming from Robert Eich, who's the writer over there. They say, quote, Warren Buffett's Bertrand Hathaway caught his stake in Apple by nearly 50%. Which again, I mean, talk about hindsight, sorry, this is not financial advice. You know, hindsight, sorry, 2020 when it comes to stock or any investments. Yeah, I wish I bought Apple stock years ago, because obviously they've been uh, growing ever since, and I believe they're worth, they just passed the $3 trillion mark a uh, couple months ago under the leadership of Tim Cook. Now, the article says, quote, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway slashed his stake in tech giant Apple by nearly 50%. According to a report released earlier this week, Berkshire Hathaway disclosed his holdings in Apple were valued at $84.2 billion at the end of the quarter, dropping from 750 million shares down to 400 million shares, which, that's quite a bit of shares. They say the sharp self is notable for Buffett, who is known for holding onto stocks for long periods of time. Berkshire Hathaway had previously downsized his stake in Apple, which had a market cap of over $3.3 trillion. In the final three months of 2023, Berkshire had sold off 10 million shares of Apple stock, representative of 1% of holdings in the company. In the first quarter of 2024, Berkshire cut its stake in Apple by 13%. They say that, meanwhile, an Omaha, Nebraska-based conglomerate reported a record of cash pile of nearly $277 billion dollars in the second quarter which and then they also reported 189 billion in cash and equivalents in the first quarter looks like berkshire hathaway sold off 75.5 billion in stock second quarter along with the apple berkshire also cut the second largest position in bank of america to down to 41.1 billion the earnings report showed that approximately 72 percent of apple's aggregate fair value was congregated into five companies including american express coming in at 35.1 billion Apple at $84.2 billion, Bank of America at $41.1 billion, Coca-Cola at $25.5 billion, and Chevron at $18.6 billion. Which, investors, in, I was going to say, if you're an investor of Chevron, I'm pretty sure you're going to be pretty happy then moving their headquarters from California to the great state, or some might argue the great country of Texas, which is much more infinitely attractive and better for businesses and has lower tax rates. And yeah, I can't but wonder how much money is Chevron going to save in taxes alone just moving their corporate headquarters down to Houston. Probably a fair bit. Probably a fair bit. Now, this is very interesting. I mean, historically speaking, Apple's been one of the most profitable, best investments most people have ever made in their life. Now, that being said, my three cents, you should be two cents, but 40 year hyperinflation got me the three cents. I mean, when it comes to Apple, I mean, all stocks are crashing this week mostly. It's uh, not great for investors or pretty much anyone who has a 401k. Well, when it comes to Apple, my three cents, again, you should be two cents, but a big thing as uncertainty with Apple is competition. I mean, of course, we've had Samsung for years. I think I'm I'm one of the few folks I know still rocking the good old S10. I'll upgrade eventually, maybe. But one of the biggest things is Huawei, which again is right now still most political parties, Republicans and Democrats, most of them aren't supportive of the banning, the continuing ban and embargo on Huawei products, which are pretty darn good. Perhaps because they save a lot of money not doing their own research and development, just ripping off other companies for the most part. But Nevertheless, that is a big competitor. You also have DJI, which I, sus I suspect they're going to get into telecom equipment, like smartphones, as they've been growing more and more. 
a lot of my friends know G DJI for using, you know, uh, camera gimbals, microphones, more or less consumer products. But I still think, call me crazy, maybe they'll enter into the market as well. There's going to be more competition with Apple. And I think their costs are going to go up because they're moving production more and more to India, which I think costs a little bit more than in China. Again, Foxconn is still their main subcontractor to assemble the phones. But yeah, I think there's also, just un <laughs> of course, economic and political uncertainty. But yeah, we also have cash being worth less than every day. What is Warren Buffett really going to do in the future? What does he think is a more stable bet than Apple? Let me know in the comments. And again, not investment investment advice, but where would you put your money if you're Warren Buffett? If you're looking for another good long-term investment. You know, like, again, it stinks because the United States is so litigious. I have to keep saying this, but not financial advice. Just let me know in the comments, because as always, we'd be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Other interesting business news. We have coverage of the new Corolla GR. We'll have an option for a uh, automatic transmission, also known as only having two pedals, which I can't imagine having such a boring vehicle. Personally, everything I've owned has always had three pedals, also known as a manual transmission, also known as the most fun you'll ever have driving bar none. There's nothing more exhilarating than downshifting in the corner. I mean, just ear to ear. All day driving a little Honda Civic Si can't beat a stick shift, but that's just me, as well as a little less than one percent, or sorry, two percent in the U.S. market of people buying new cars. But there's a lot of speculation. I mean, a lot of people love the Corolla GR. I mean, the most successful car in history, bar none, by the number of units sold, is the Toyota Corolla. I mean, it is darn near bulletproof, like most Japanese vehicles that aren't Nissan. But it's one of those instances where there's a certain enthusiast which. Only, they appreciate that a certain trim level or a certain option only came with stick shift. That's one of the reasons I thought the Ford Focus ST was so cool. Because if you wanted to enjoy that performance, little car, little sedan, you had to learn to drive a stick shift, as it is intended. And the Corolla GR was the top performance Corolla trim line. It's a great track toy. When I go to the track, I mean, Toyota has the GR experience. Again, not, I was going to say, I need to buy their stock or something or, you know, if they do an affiliate link. I talk so much nice things about Toyota. They have an affiliate, or not affiliate, they have an instance where in Texas, especially, you get like a, a membership to NASA, which is one of the greatest, best known track organizations. And they actually take you, well, you pay for it and buy the car, but it's included as a free option. You have the track experience. They have a Toyota person in the car with you. They teach you how to drive your car as, in, as it's intended by the engineers. That's so cool. And it, again, it's every GR. They have the Super GR, the Corolla GR, and then the this is known as a Scion FRS or Subaru BRZ, also known now as a Toyota 86 as well. But now they will have an automatic, which will increase sales because anyone with a modicum of intelligence can uh, drive an automatic. There's serious side effects such as dying inside emotionally, but nevertheless, I know it is. There's a lot of people in the market appreciate it. But there's a lot of speculation. I mean, there, there was just a leaked report a couple weeks ago from a, 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 a parts subcontractor, I believe, in Canada. Where they said, well, maybe, you know, this looks like an option. This could be automatic. But now we have a straight from the horse's mouth. You have it from Toyota. They say, quote, the GR lineup heats up as a new direct automatic transmission option is on Toyota's Corolla. Toyota, Toyota's, oh, I can barely speak. It's so heartbreaking. Toyota's GR Corolla. And pull up. Eh, I mean, it's a pretty cool looking picture. It's a pretty neat looking car. And they said, uh, Toyota Gazoo Racing adds a direct automatic transmission to the GR Corolla. New premium grade now available. They say the 2025 GR Corolla provides more engine torque at 295 foot pounds of torque. Launch control adapted to enable powerful acceleration. Suspension enhancements add stability when cornering, which, yeah, it's not unique to the automatic only, but still Corolla. They say redesigned front bumper to improve cooling and aerodynamic, aerodynamics to also increase sales because people like facelifts and they look pretty cool on cars. Usually, just celebrities do it, they usually look detrimental a couple years later. They also say they'll come with a one year complimentary membership to, oh, Case in point, just like I was saying, I'll know this more articulate, complimentary one-year membership to the National Auto Sports Association, also known as NASA, which I'm a little biased, that's the one I'm part of and I love it. Pretty great as organization. They say it's going to come with an eight-speed Gazoo Racing Direct Automatic Transmission with paddle shifters, uh, which, eh, we'll see. Now, this is say that this comes just shortly after the reveal of the Corolla GR 2022, Rizano Akio Toyoda, which is kind of the grandson of the founder, challenged his team to think about what's next, which is kind of what inspired them to make this awesome trim level for this vehicle. So it's a little disappointing for the purist. Uh, I'm one of those folks where I think everyone should have the opportunity, or everyone should just buy a stick shift. I mean, they have a lot more fun driving. You'll pay a lot more attention to the road. There you can see the redesigned front bumper. Well, yeah, you do get a couple more gaping holes for the air to rush into the engine and cool it off. 
They got a nice refresh interior, although it's disgusting because, oh yeah, it's got two pedals and a anemic little automatic transmission sh uh, s drive selector. But it does have a nice pull brake, which I wish more car companies had those because it's nice, simple, and easy to use, and you don't have to wait for the computer. Which one of the few things I don't like about my little 2018 Civic Si is you got the little anemic paddle uh, toggle switch for the e-brake, which annoying as all hell, or the parking brake rather. Which, that's not great. And then, of course, it looks like they had redesigned the front hood. Look, I'll be interested to see if there's actually functional air scoops or, well, we call it exhaust flaps for the engine on top. Which, interestingly enough, enough, is not really a new thing in terms of fake things. I think the first one was actually a Ferrari way back in the day in the 60s. Someone in the comments fact check me on that. But a little disappointing thing for the purists. Good for the folks who, you know, they like having an automatic transmission. They've been maybe thinking about getting the top performers to Corridor GR. And hopefully it does get more people into racing, then someday they'll grow up and they'll figure out that, well, I, well, I could have you more fun if I was downshifted in the corner. But that's just me. Let, I mean, let me know. Do you think, what will the sales breakdown be now that they have the automatic and manual transmission option? It's always delightful to see when there's more manuals and automatic sold. I mean, Cadillac CTS V4, v, CT4V Blackwing, not great marketing, it's a long name, but to me, that's just infinitely more fun with a stick shift. I had the privilege of driving with buddies one, uh, a couple years back. And that take rate was actually about 50%. So let me know in the comments, what do you think the take rate will be now that there's an automatic option? Will it be a 50-50 split? Will it be, you know, 75% people go for the stick versus automatic? Let me know in the comments. As always, be fascinating to hear what you have to say. Now going over to the Culture Prime Podcast, you have the Museum of Pop. Well, they're advertising a drag camp for kids. Huh. You might ask, what the hell does this have to do with music? Good question. We have to, you might ask, also ask, wait a minute, we were, told, we were told we were paranoid for saying they're going after kids. Yeah, about that. This comes with thanks to Lives of TikTok over on the X Twitter, which she says, quote, the Museum of Pop is advertising a drag camp for kids where drag queens teach children how to become drag queens and create their own drag persona. They're proud to be grooming children, but we're the weird ones. And granted, I know sometimes I can barely enunciate, yet alone speak articulately, which is another friendly reminder to click that subscribe button, especially if you're on the big green streaming platform, because my goal is to get there two, 200 subscribers by the end of the month. A little ambitious, I know, but gotta aim high. And I have a theory. When I first started the show, basically zero subscribers, and I spoke even worse. Believe it or not, I spoke even faster, not really articulate, more of a robotic voice. But every time I've gained more subscribers, my speaking link has slowly but surely become more articulate to the goal. Someday, maybe, if you have million subscribers or more, I will have a full episode without any speaking mix haps. It's just a theory I have. It's been, I think, been proven thus far. But if you can go ahead and take that time to click that subscribe button and or tell your friends, or shoot, tell your enemies as well. Maybe they will soon become your friends. Or they'll hate you even more because they disdain this content. You never know. Find out. But going back to this, going, you see the uh, drag queen, queen uh, dressed up there with about more, about five pounds of makeup, which, I mean, I guess that's good for your neck muscles to exercise like that. That's, that's a lot of makeup there. They, they also kind of this contour, or contour. Kind of looks like a... Almost looks like a Iron Man painted onto this person's face. With a hat that's ridiculously weird and sunglasses that, yeah, to me look weird as well. Hmm. Now, this is again straight from the website. They say, quote, ages 12 to 18, quote, calling all current and future royal royalty. Your invitation to slay is here. I'll stop that right there. That word has been so used and abused the past couple years. Is unless you're in Dungeons and Dragons, don't use that word. It's just ridiculous. Now they say, quote, explore self-expression in this camp led by Seattle performer Joshua Hancock featuring performers Kara Soltra, King Leo Maine, and Mia Moore, where you'll immerse yourself in drag history, learn hair and makeup techniques, and create your persona with your own name and stage presence. Then it'll be time to own the stage in a private showcase to celebrate your new drag identity. Now, as far as it's highlighted, they also say, quote, M-Pop will provide cosmetics, wigs, nails, etc. Though, disappointingly enough, for the craftsmen, not the actual nails you can use to build awesome furniture. They mean the actual fingernails, which, yeah, when I was a kid, I thought those were all nail stores. Fun little pack when you're driving around town. It's like, oh, no, those aren't. You go to Home Depot for that. Or Lowe's if you're, you know, a wife at home. They say, quote, I'm kidding, kind of. They say, quote, some additional supplies like single-use makeup or specialty props, wigs, or cosmetics may need to be purchased. Tuition, who the hell is paying this? $380 if registered prior to 
530, $400 if registered after 531. MPOP members received a $25 discount on camps. So not only is this horrifying, but it's also you're paying for this. All that money to emotionally scar your kids. I guess we should be, should be too surprised at this day, given the current political and rather cultural climate in the United States. And when moderate, the moderately vile got a couple hundred thousand views in the first couple of hours, got 4.4 thousand likes as well. One of the first comments comes from Paul Zuba saying, quote, targeting children with adult content is immoral and illegal. This should be no different. In 43 likes, which I can't but think you should probably do an extra background check of the people hosting this event, because statistically speaking, it's uh, kind of horrifying when you find out. Find memes, though they did not respond in meme form, just text. However, well, go ahead and play this alleged planet of memes. Let's quote, why can't people just leave the kids alone? Getting 39 likes. Good question. The Texas one simply said, killed abusers, getting 11 likes, which I did change the vernacular to make this moderately more family friendly. Cash Loren says, why do they always target kids? Getting four likes. Russia said, I never, I never ever thought wanting to protect a child's innocence would be considered a hateful and wrong. How did we get here? Getting 137 likes, which I think we would go back to the old slippery slope, no longer theory, just a fact as we allowed everything to happen. And... As cliche as it sounds, the, uh, what was it? Was it the Reverend's wife in the Simpsons? She would clichely, clichely, she would always say, someone think of the children. And ironically, I think she was right along, because the past couple decades, no one really has. And, yeah. Evil Texan, though ironically, I kind of think he's the good Texan. Nevertheless, he claims, um, uh, well, again, cover your ears if you have children listening. He says, pedos have become mainstream. We will not forget this. I quote, getting 61 likes, which, eh. Salty goat, oh, ooh, cover your eyeballs, because this is horrifying. He says, I can't I, sorry, he says, I honestly cannot believe how weird MAGA is. Oh, wait. Yeah, it's quite the antithesis. And here you have a, what is it, a biological man trying to chest feed a child. Yeah, I got 57 likes, and yeah, the horrifying what's going on these days. They they rather have their child in malnutrition. Yeah, just to indulge their own deranged and perverse behavior. Going down, you have the Timpsons parody where he looks, they have the bus driver pointing at something. He says, don't make me tap the sign. It says, it's not rocket science, guys. They're just evil and want to abuse kids. I got 47 likes. Eh? Let's see here. If there's any contrarian statements here, because there are presumably millions of Americans who do think this is not only tolerable, but think it's a good idea. And their parents paying for this. Like $400? I mean, jeez. So not to make contrarian comments here, not granted it's a biased sample size, it's lives on TikTok. I would guess the average person following lives on TikTok is more middle of the road or right on average if you're to break down culturally and politically have her audience. Well, let's see here. Do one more. Hey kid says, looks like Denver's dragon taunty? Uplifting the performance by providing a safe and professional mentors. Jeez. Yeah. There you have a uh Says, beginning in 2017, drag, drag unite. Terrible, terrible word pun. I usually give word puns the accolades, no matter who says them, if they're, if they're well spoken. It looks like it's Dracula and drag. And it says, I'll reset the quote. Beginning in 2017, drag unite has been uplift, be, been uplifting young performers by providing a safe stage with professional mentors to let drag kids shine. Yeah, and then of course they have a kid dressed up like that with the person there. Interestingly enough, I didn't get any likes, but horrifying picture. And, and this is becoming more and more mainstream. This is like an outlier situation reserved only for San Francisco. This is expansion, ex, exponentially increasing in popularity in the United States. And culturally speaking, we see a little bit of backlash, but it's very concerning. I mean, even in the great state, or some might argue the great country of Texas, well, there are instances where you had child friendly, and I use. Uh, quotation marks because there's no such thing. They had child-friendly drag shows because in, they are inherently sexual by, by their very nature. They believe it's actually Denton. They had a show at a bar. Again, two strikes. Kids shouldn't be there twice. And legally, the kids should not be allowed there. Yeah, the police acquiesced just saying, well, we don't want to cause a ruckus. So, I mean, there's a huge cultural reinforcement, not just the law in this case. I mean, it was just like these parades where you have naked adults in front of children. Legally, they should be thrown in jail for, I want to say, a hundred years, a thousand years. But culturally, those cities like it and they embrace it. They celebrate it. It's quite horrifying, and, but and illegal. But 
please acquiesce and do nothing in many cases. Not saying all, but in many cases. And yeah, I hope this is, I think education is key in terms of, I don't think the average American still realizes how popular these trends are, especially with the kids. And I hope people, you know, figure this out. And that's why I kind of bring it up. But let me know. I mean, anecdotally speaking, in your community, is this a common practice? I mean, do local parents actually pay and, you know, celebrate and have their kids go off to do these things? Let me know in the comments. As always, be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Other interesting cultural news. You have camera roll in London from the 1960s going viral because there's a uh, fascinatingly enough that something's uh, a little missing. Uh, uh, oh, yes, there's no crime. There's no graffiti. There's not a lot of trash. It's kind of like Harlem back in the day, which used to be a very safe, secure, family-friendly city. You're winding back the clock enough. Yeah, but wonder if it's government interventionalism and uh, handing out support programs to make you depend on the government, not nuclear family, that caused the downfall of that. Probably. But another topic for another time, perhaps. This comes from End Wokeness on X Twitter. They say, quote, 1960s London, no knife attacks, no civil unrest. And they also say no multiculturalism, unquote. And here, they, uh, they do entertainingly look very British and... If the evil YouTube doesn't strike down the music so you can't hear it, hopefully they'll just do a simple rudimentary um, revenue play or something. You'll be able to hear the cliche classical music, which, yeah, hopefully it makes a comeback in our lifetime. I doubt it will, but you can see. And they also, all these men, they also know, so, all these men have something in common. They all, but mostly, suit up, as all men should. See the cliche red double decker bus? They have the whole, what do you call that? Is it the beret? There's no flags, too. That's weird. It's usually, like... Again, whoever's, make, whoever's making flags right now is making a killing. I mean, there's a new flag every three days, or so it seems. Old Nissan logo, I think. Wow. People just dressed up better back in the day. A church that isn't on fire? That's rare. The old... Oh, no, that's... What was it, though? The old... The old Cheshire cheese, rebuilt in 1667. Old British cars. Unfortunately, no Aston Martins. To me, it's like their thing. Oh, stick shift too. This is insane. There's an intersection in a city without crime, without, as they would say, rubbish, rubbish on the ground next to the dustbin. The, the actual rubbish actually is in the dustbin. Huge cultural phenomenon. You see, you know, I, I challenge someone to show me this in one American city now. That it isn't a small town. Like, it... four red double decker buses. Oh, scooter. Fancy fountain. Beautiful stone structures. Architecture was better back in the day in a lot of cases. The cliche clocks, when, when, when people could actually still tell the time with an analog clock. The London Tower. Oh, they do have a couple flags. There we go. They're normal though. More double decker buses, a couple boats. Definitely a blast from the past. I. I still can't get over that. Like, look at... I'm just rewinding it again to the, to the street. There's not a single soda can or, I guess in the case of Oregon, herpet, uh, hypodermic needles or drugs there. A, a strange thing. I think it's... Uh, uh, this uh, End Wokeness is saying it's about culture... Or, um, oh, is it, is it multicultural, uh, multiculturalism? I think it's, you know, it's also having pride in your city. It's also, you know, you're just community... I don't think it's a singularity. Um, I don't think it's a single variable that's causing this necessarily. It's been pretty well. I got 2.5 million views and 84,000 likes. And no knife attacks. That's a rare thing. Paul Zupa says, back when borders were borders and citizens were citizens, getting 541 likes. Let's see here. Scrolling down more and more. Is there any country? That most social... Four factors. That is the ideal model for civilization. He says, not these minorities gain 1.5 thousand likes, which, again, I don't think that's necessarily the case. I mean, look at, I mean, small Hispanic cities, small African Americans, back in the, just most cities in general back in the day. I don't think that, 
I don't think that's a, again, I don't think that's a single variable. Because again, I mean, look at the old videos of Harlem back in the day. It was beautiful. Like, look at Detroit back in the day. I mean, these cities were beautiful. Like, the streets were clean. The people all suited up. I mean, a lot more personal accountability back in the day. The government wasn't so big taking care of everything. The other top comments here, AKA said, yep, we need to get rid of that woke ideology, getting 353 likes. Aki Des says, when London was, fa uh, when London was fa fantastic, now it's a bloody war zone. No, you have, that's, how, that's how I know he's British, he's saying bloody. He says, with Sadiq Khan as mayor of London, the worst mayor in London all time. And he says, welcome to Sadiq Khan's wonderful new London. Every year's fair children listening, he says, um, rape is up 18%, theft is up 34%, homicide is up 27%, burglary is up 19%, drug crime is up 16%. That's interesting, I thought they banned those. Night crime is up 31%. Oh wait, I thought they banned those too. Youth homicide is up 70%. Now, unfortunately, they do not give us a URL to the specific statistics or the source of the statistics, but they did get 168 likes. One bad dude says the destruction has become international, getting 121 likes. EC, I, I, sorry, Iris Saproni says, except in Ireland where the English army killed people regularly. And got there, you got 485 likes. Here. Uh, Purple's the Great? Says, any immigrants who don't assimilate should be sent home quickly. It's like, not really infographic, more of a, eh, just fancy. It's words on a yellow background. Not even a meme. But nevertheless, it says, quote, American, or sorry, immigrants want to assimilate our society. If Im if Muslims want Sharia law, they should go to, they should not be in America or the West. Sharia law makes women slaves, property of men. Sharia law teaches hate of all non-Muslims. Sharia law does not believe to in do unto others. Fairness in the, is the basis for Western civilization. I got 650 likes. Going down more and more. Let's see. I forget what meme this is. We have the royalty looking all snobby. Uh, Brandon says, unfortunately, the left will use the protest to double down on their bad policies. And it says, immigrants in the UK watching UK citizens get arrested for protesting migrant crime. Dang, 104 likes. Let's see here. Proud Patriot US says import third world, become third world, getting 91 likes. Which it's been so it's been said so often it's kind of a cliche at this point, I think. And also, I mean, again, if they're legal citizens, that's what most countries want, especially when you have a decreasing birth rate. And I mean, look at some in the United States, some of the biggest biggest West known, best known businesses are started in immigrants. They actually start businesses businesses at a greater rate of American born citizens when it comes to American uh, immigrants starting companies. So I, yeah, in terms of, I think you want to make sure they're not crimes and do a background check. The United States, jeez, with our southern border, really don't do any of that. Going down, you have Prophecy 13 saying, funny how everything just worked back then. Wonder what changed. Getting 35 likes. Pulsey Gabbard parody account says, liberals are at anything. Everything started getting 40 likes. Oh, this is <laughs> perfect. You have a painting of a girl praying, and the painting is from, uh, just from Jared Marsh. It says, quote, Dear government, please save us from the problems you created. Amen. Getting 27 likes, which one of my favorite uh, analogies. Was, I, I, it, it loses me at the moment, the original author who came up with the idea. But there's an old adage when it comes to government. Someone said, the government's really good at coming up and breaking your leg and then coming back and giving you a crutch and saying, hey, how great am I? I just, I just helped you out. One of my favorite old analogies. Don Daverton says this is the comparison when you add immigrants. And it's like, uh, where was this from? I'm guessing it's London, based on the funny looking vehicles. I think they're, well, is that, Peugeot? is that Peugeot? And the funny little don't enter sign. And you have people, well, I mean, there they're just chanting and walking in the streets. Again, use the sidewalk, folks. I mean, I know they're not trying to be peaceful necessarily. Getting, I think they get six likes. But... Yeah, a lot of people have already said London has fallen. This is the same place where they're flying the Union Jack. They had a couple, you know, British citizens, you know, waving their old funny-looking flag. Looks like a failed geometry class. But they were waving their old flag, and they had um, migrants or legal citizens. I'm not sure how they're getting there. They all had their flags, and the police actually went to the, you know, English citizens and said, hey, put your, put your flag, put the jack down. You're making them upset, and they outnumber us. Which, I mean, that's just quite concerning to say at least. Pretty good indicator that your country has, you know, surely fallen. 
But let me know. Is this, I mean, have you seen this on a local level? Depending on where you are located geographically, would be especially fascinated to hear, as always, what you have to say. Now, going over to the political part of the podcast, you have Biden wants to uh, ban AR 15s and force universal background checks, as well as remove immunity for gun manufacturers to bankrupt every single one of them. And it went pretty viral. Mentally vacuous, yes. Granted, this is probably just one of his interns typing it for him. I don't think he knows how to use a smartphone. Probably not. But this allegedly comes from the, you know, the president's link. I was going to say LinkedIn. It'd be fascinating if he had a LinkedIn, but he's never had a job. But nevertheless, this comes from his ex Twitter account. Now, he allegedly says, quote, it's time to ban assault weapons and high capacity magazines like we did before. It's time we establish universal background checks. And it's time to end immunity for the gun lobby, unquote. Mentally vacuous, evil, of course. Now, he's referring to the old, fascinatingly enough, he's re- referring to the old assault weapons ban, which three independent studies found had no decrease, no correlation to any decrease in crime or decrease in mass shootings. It also was unconstitutional. So he wants to put that in, back in place. Also, the beautiful thing about modern society, he says no high capacity magazines. Fun well, fact, the 30 round magazine is standard with all AR 15s that live in a free state, and was how Eugene. Eugene Stoner quickly changed it from the original capacity of 20 rounds to 30 rounds. Many people say to, to copy the AK-47's capacity. But 30 round has been the standard for decades. Do not let them use 1984 word manipulation to say high capacity magazines. Nope. They're trying to use words. They're just, of course, being deceitful. They want to ban that. Establish universal background checks, also unconstitutional. That means they would have a massive database of every single firearm, which, again, if you look at historically speaking, that has never, ever, 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 ever worked in favor of freedom. In fact, if you look at the most evil governments in history, the worst things always come after gun confiscation. It's happened every single time. Now, he also says we want to end, immu- uh, again, ban the AR-15 and go back to that for New York minute. You can't ban it. You can certainly try to. The Supreme Court, thank God, will overturn that in a second. Well, the Supreme Court, thanks to, I believe, the Bruin decision, they have said you cannot ban firearms in common use. Fun fact of the day, over 50% of all rifles sold in the United States, which are the style and variant, are of the AR-15 design. Perhaps because it's the perfect thing that Eugene Stoner ironically made in California back in the day when he worked at Arborlight. But it's also because maybe the patent expired so anyone can make them with the popular proper manufacturing license. But yeah, it is the most common rifle bar none. So you're not going to be able to ban them. There are just too many. You won't be able to get... Good luck trying to take them back. You'd have to take every person to court. Because again, in the United States, you do not get your property taken away without due process. So they'd have to somehow maybe sue every citizen or take them to court to steal it from them and disarm them. And then he says, and this is very, very important, end immunity from the gun lobby. What he is trying to say is remove immunity from the manufacturers, which would bankrupt every gun company ever. Now, this is a very unique attack on the Second Amendment, as well as the firearm community, firearm manufacturers. Now, from a legal perspective, this is what should happen, in terms of legally speaking. If someone takes your product and does something evil with it, that manufacturer is not responsible for that, because you're an individual with individual... You have the freedom to make choices as an individual. You're self-aware. You can do, you can do whatever you want. Now, this is very unique, because the Democrats are always going after the firearm community, firearm manufacturers. No one has ever said we need to sue Ford because someone went out, they bought a Ford, and committed heinous acts. They killed people, they killed them with a Ford. Not because they were at a car meet and they spun out in a Mustang like they do, but they used it for true evil and intentionally used it as a weapon. They've never said we need to go after Ford and sue them for that. Because again, that's not the manufacturer's issue. With firearms, they want to remove that so they could bankrupt every single one. Because again, any gun manufacturer, you take that gun, but then they go and do some evil with it. Well, then they're saying, oh yeah, now you can sue the firearm manufacturer. Even though you didn't buy it from them. In vast, I mean, in terms of end users buying firearms in the United States, they have a very much indirect sales model. Meaning they sell to a very similar to major traditional car companies. They manufacture the product. They then sell it to a distributor. And that distributor sells it to a gun dealer. The gun dealer uses a 4473 paperwork background check for a person. And then sells it to a person. So there's an indirect sales model on top of all that. Now, make no mistake, they want to remove that protection to bankrupt every gun company. Now, the beautiful thing about the United States and Second Amendment is you can make your own gun, if you, again, not legal advice, but if you, as long as you do not sell it to someone else or give it away, you can make your own gun, and the AR-15 is such a rudimentary, well, it's a brilliant design, but 
It's very soft aluminum, so many people will just make their own. So he's saying he wants to do this all, all unconstitutional, but that hasn't stopped them before. This is one of the most viral things Biden has posted in the past year. And it got 3.2 million views, as well as 61,000 likes from people who perhaps want to be oppressed or mentally vacuous or evil, or perhaps a combination of all three. Because again, read any evil dictator, read any, just read any history book. Most evil things always happen when the flat, when the guns are taken away from the populace. Also the, also the antithesis to what the founding fathers believed. They thought you should have the same, or no, actually no. They thought you should have better armaments than the government because they feared the government would become so bloated, corrupt, and evil. So again, I wish more people read about the founding fathers. Perhaps they will someday. Now, going to some top comments, you got X Van Fleet, who actually escaped communism in China. Or some might say China, but nevertheless. Now, X Van Fleet says, quote, Hashtag POTUS, the communist Democrats will disarm you just like the CCP has done to the Chinese people. Wake up. They got 1.7 thousand likes. Got their Eagleman says, quote, Joe, your staffer doesn't seem to understand the Second Amendment. I got 6.1 thousand likes, which, yeah, very few people in politics do, unfortunately. I almost feel like there should be some test if you're a politician. You should be able to actually, you know, know what the Bill of Rights is in the Constitution. You know, you know, actually be able to stand for them. That'd be nice as well. And yeah. The most rudimentary argument I always hear is, well, no one needs an AR-15 for uh, deer hunting. Yeah, that's not, what they, that's not what the Second Amendment was for. It is to protect you from corrupt governments and also, and also evil people around you. As a famous man once said, God made man, but Samuel L. Colt made man equal. Planet of Memes says this, and they did respond in meme form, finally. No, excuse me, and they say this, and it says, any politician who wants to ban these, and you have a picture of a good old Glock, says it should have bodyguards armed with these and as a picture of a slingshot. I get 3.9 thousand likes. Another great example of the hypocrisy of politicians. Many of them basically have unlimited firearm power. Not just in quantity in terms of having a bunch of armed guards around them, but also they got good old full auto P90s. Whereas if you and I want to buy a machine gun, we have to have one that was manufactured and registered with the U.S. government before 1986. Also pay a $200 uh, tax stamp. Also pay sales tax on top of that. And also, oh yeah, you have to do additional background check, additional uh, paperwork, which is a fingerprints and photo ID or a photo passport photo taken. And then you have to wait, you know, six months to a year to get that paperwork back from the U.S. government, the Treasury Department. And yeah, politicians have unlimited power. Power doesn't sound very American to me. Great point, Planet of Memes. Planet Suzuka also says, will Joe Biden's be banning the assault weapons that his Secret Service will also use, getting one point five thousand likes. Planet of Memes, oh, they're on fire. They got another meme for us. Says, Joe, you can't have that. And you have someone, and this gentleman has a gun being pointed at his face. It says, you idiot, you can't threaten me with that. That's illegal. Gained 2.4 thousand likes. Another friendly reminder of Chicago, which has nearly every one of the gun laws that Democrats want on a federal level, they have it on a city level, which, again, has been a cesspool. And the murder, uh, uh, it's just been a cliche, terrible place to live for decades, and it's one of the most dangerous places. Yeah. But they want to roll that out nationwide. Yeah, about that. Probably not the best idea. Now, scrolling down more and more. And again, going back to the universal background checks, one of the few things I think Ted Cruz said in his political career where he really hit the nail on the head when he was debating Dianne Feinstein a couple years ago, and again, they were trying to steal AR-15s from folks again. He said, there's only two reasons for the government to have a list of all the guns and who owns them. To tax them or to take them. I think it is very, very true. Now, scrolling down to more comments, you have Cash Loren says, someone should show Biden staff for the Constitution and, and have them read the Second Amendment. It says the Second Amendment, a regulated, regulated militia, militia being necessary to secure a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. They got 705 likes. Play that means it's on fire. I'll, I'll probably, this will be the last one to read. It says, pro tip, and it's a picture of a, let's say that's a, ooh, is that a CZ pistol or a SIG? Let me know in the comments what you think. It says, pro, and it's covered up in, uh, looks like printer paper. It says, pro tip, hide your guns from the government by wrapping them in the Epstein client list. Getting 227 likes. Well, then they never find it. So they never examine it. Let's see here. Just a dude says, Here's some, here are some areas of concrete change. It starts with leadership. And it's an infographic of the, or a little map of the U.S. that's mostly red. And it says, 97% of all guns are in red territory. 97% of all gun violence is in blue. Yep. I don't think it's a coincidence. Gaining 1.1 uh, 1, thousand likes. John Fresh says, can you please define assault weapon so we can all understand what you're trying to ban? Gaining 1.5 thousand likes. Another brilliant thing. And the power of political polling and research. They looked up 
all the different scary words they can use to describe firearms. They actually tried, like, would it be scary to use the word sniper rifle? The average American wasn't too scared of that. But they thought, assault weapon, ooh. People with, I mean, rude run for the people think that's evil got banned that. But again, when they say assault weapon, they mean scary black rifles. Because again, was it? Over, a vast majority of every firearm sold in the United States is a semi-automatic of, of a function of fire. And again, that Ruger 1022, or they just think it's evil because it's black, it's AR-15, it's tactical. It's still a semi-auto rifle. Every American should have a full AR-15 if they're of um, sound mind. And yet they say, oh yeah, we need to ban this one because it's scary and black. Yeah. Salty, Salty Goat says, come and take it then, uh, retard, getting 1.1 thousand likes, complete with a middle figure emoji. Which, appreciate the spirit. However, they also outgun you a good zillion to one. So, unfortunately, yeah. Oh, a picture of a, what was it, like a gal from the 1950s, it's like an old advertisement where she's trying to drink coffee. It says, reject degeneracy. Again, click that subscribe button. It might help with my stuttering. Perhaps we'll get through a whole show with perfect articulate speaking someday. A man can dream. And she's saying, quote, once you give up your guns, they're going to kill you. You know that, right? Getting 665 likes. Vance Murphy says the Venezuelan election is exactly what we need, why we need high capacity magazines or weapons. Getting 733 likes. Kimberly says, so, so, so no background check for illegals, but background checks for Americans with constitutional rights. Getting 356 likes. Yeah. Do one more here. Mm. It's like an old cliche cartoon from the 50s where a mother and a little girl is asking, dollars is asking her mother something. She says, Mom, what's an assault weapon? She says, no one knows it's a it's a term used by emotionally unstable liars who want who want you defenseless, desperate, and dependent. In five hundred and twenty four likes. So again, this the United States is about fifty fifty split. There should be about fifty fifty split in the comments with people following Biden on social media. And yeah, it seems like overwhelming. As he, I mean, it sounds like he almost has a Chris Christie effect. A fascinating social media phenomenon in which you have zero positive comments. In the, I mean, which is almost statistically impossible because when Chris Christie's rolling, I mean, running for, you know, Republican nominee, they haven't twice to him where, again, he said something and no one said anything positive. And presumably he has, you know, campaign staff, friends, maybe, you know, family. Yet two times, not, nothing positive. And this may very well be the same thing. Ms. Dinko says, this is what you want for your country. It says Venezuela bans private gun ownership. And, oh, it's heartbreaking. Taking a settling torch to a nice revolver. They got 54 likes. Yeah. So that is one of the nice, um, in terms of silver linings of the pandemic, is many Americans were became first time gun owners, and they realized, oh, wait a minute, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these, you know, mayors was telling the police to stand down, just let the riots roam, go free. Might have to actually defend yourself and not defend the government, and many people chose to. So it'll be interesting to see if that's one of the main topics when it comes to the upcoming election this year. I think we have seen the pendulum swing. We are in terms of you know, states' rights, in terms of more and more program things happening. Thankfully, more and more states are becoming constitutional carry, and there are some so, yeah, there are some good things happening. I wish someday the Republicans could get off their lazy keisters and repeal an NFA Act, also known as the National, National Firearms Act of 1934, to actually own fun things without the burdensome, I would say, unconstitutional paperwork. I don't know what the odds of that is, but perhaps someday, but let me know in the comments. Do you, have you seen more people in your life that are becoming more pro-gun throughout the past couple of years, or at least starting to be open to the idea of, well, what, I mean, my, this is probably, probably best to have it than to not have it. Um, and really speaking, I've seen a couple of my friends who are more left, or a couple of them in the middle, who, I mean, 10 years ago, they've never, never even thought of touching a gun, but lately, they've been open to coming out to the range, and proud to say I've brought a couple of them to have their first range experience, and a lot of them usually get hooked, and they become proud, responsible gun owners. So, let me know in the comments. As always, it'd be fascinating to hear what you have to say. Other interesting political news, the Ohio Sixth Circuit rules that, court, that schools can punish kids for quote-unquote misgendering someone. Now, this comes to us thanks to, again, lives of TikTok, in which she says, quote, insane. Ohio's Sixth Circuit of Court of Appeals recently ruled that Oakland and G's SD can punish students for intentionally misgendering others. The court claims, quote, that the district did not compel such speech in a way that violates students' First Amendment rights, unquote. And she says, continue, how is forcing students to use made-up pronouns not a violation of the First Amendment's rights? How even is that allowed, unquote? Well, it's because they all have their own ideology and they know what they're pushing. And at this point, I don't think anyone is really surprised. I mean, Jordan Pearson called this years ago when they had compelled speech over in Canada. 
and where they literally actually would jail you for speech over there and fine you, in fact. Unfortunately, it seems the First Amendment is becoming more and more whittled away these days, like many of the other amendments. And, yeah, I'm not too surprised. Maybe this will get appealed, or maybe it'll get overturned to the future. But, I mean, again, it's the Court of Appeals already. So I'm not sure how much stuff there is. I mean, I know back in my day, let's just say every one of those kids, every one of us would probably be thrown in jail if all these, all these uh, word control, mind control laws were on the books. And went by really valid, got a couple hundred thousand views and, you know, about 3,000 likes. With some of the first comments going from, oh, it's going down, Paul Zupa saying, quote, This is beyond ridiculous. Defund Ohio schools until this nonsense stops. Forcing gender ideology onto children in this way is criminal. Getting 89 likes. I forget, what was that? Taylor Swift's boyfriend or whatever that guy's name is. And he's yelling at the coach. And this pic, this is from base, uh, or masculine base, and they are really problematic. And they have the cliche image where he, low class, he's just yelling at the coach. And his head has a flag that says LGBT propaganda. And the coach is just saying there nonchalantly saying me trying to live my life. Getting 78 likes. Libercat Media TM says Unreal, says, and then has a sign that says Democrats are Communists, getting 95 likes. Lori says, people say elections don't matter, but they do. Do you want Kamala's appointing more judges that churn out ridiculous rulings like Olengangi School District can punch kids for using non made up pronouns? For not using made up pronouns, grammar error there on my part, gained 36 likes. Craig Chamberlain says, quote, they shouldn't be happening in America. This allows people to legally bully elections in speech. Yep, getting 90. Who? I just I was about to say I made 97 likes. A couple of folks had some their mind it got up to 102 likes. Libercat Media TM also says the best thing to do in these states situations is to take them straight to the top, the Supreme Court, or rectify this nonsense, getting 45 likes. True. Give us any contrary statements here. Pair of Trooper Brady says sounds like communism, getting 18 likes. True. Real Ben Conservative Cartoon says soon getting 57 likes. Oh, this is exposed. Big Pharma says, and it says Satan. And someone on the extra is known as Satan. It says hard times create so, uh, strong men. Soft times create create pronouns. And thirty two likes. Which, yeah, if your society is so, I mean, if life is so easy that you have time to make up make up things like that, yeah, it says something. I got again thirty two likes. Let's see any contrarian statements. Again, there are millions of Americans who are not only embracing this, this but calling for these types of things. Let's see it here. I forget what you call it. There's a meme of the guy who, uh, uh, I think he sla slaps someone upside the head and goes and yells in their ear. And that guy's been really able to say, kindergartens, I just want to count the school teachers go. I said we're learning about, he's uh, a couple of years ago, children listening, he says, uh, trans private parts gang, getting four likes. I don't know, is this reason 9,458,975,403 reason to uh, homeschool your kids? I think it's, I think we're up to that point by now because the, uh, I was going to say, the reasons are mounting more and more. And, I mean, are you seeing this in your neighborhood or in your school community or school district? And do you think it will spread? Again, it's not an isolated thing just only happening in California. It's happening more and more on a national level. So let me know in the comments. As always, be fascinating to hear what you have to say. Other interesting political news. You have Kamala and Biden inflation rates versus Trump inflation rates. And uh, going pretty viral, to say the least. Now this comes to us thanks to Insurrection Barbie in which she says on the good old ex-Twitter, if for some reason you're still undecided, here's a helpful chart for you to ponder. And they say, quote, inflation at same at same point in presidency. You got energy at Trump for 0%. Biden was 38.8%. Remember when gas is under $2 a gallon? That was nice. Gasoline was negative 2% under Trump. It was 47.8% under Biden. Electricity was 3% under Trump. 29.3% under Biden. Natural gas was negative 1.9% under Trump, 26.9% under Biden, which, again, remember when the U.S. For, was it the first time in 40 years or energy independent? We were actually exporting more fuel than we were using. That's kind of nice. Groceries was 3.3% inflation under Trump, 21.1% under Biden, which I kind of think mine's more than that. Under Trump, eggs were negative 3.6% over Biden is 90, or sorry, 49.3%. Milk was 2.36% under Trump, 15% under Biden. Chicken is 3.7% under Trump, 23.9% under Biden. Transportation, 2.3% under Trump, 32.5% under Biden. Airfare is negative 13.8%, which granted you had the pandemic driving down demand to basically nothing. So a little outlier in that industry, especially. And then under Biden is 32.7%. Public transportation is negative 8.1% under Trump, 22%, or sorry, 22.2% under Biden. 
Used cars was 2.4% under Trump, 20.9% under Biden, which it is crazy. My little used 2018 Honda, well, I bought it, but uh, 2018 Honda Civic Si, I mean, those things are actually still worth about the same or if not more than what I paid for it. And that's even with, you know, 70,000 miles on it. That's insane. Some might say it's just because it's the last awesome Honda Civic. I'm a little biased because it's the last coupe that they made in terms of a generation, but that's not the reason, probably. Apparel was 0.6% inflation under Trump and 13.5% under Biden, which, yeah, for fashion apparel like myself, it doesn't matter because I haven't bought clothes in 10 or 15 years. I make one suit last forever. Like I have like, I have like three total. And that's why pretty well. I got 1 million views and 27,000 likes, which it is quite fascinating when you go, because I like to join Twitter spaces left and right, just kind of see what's out there. And, you know, echo chambers get a little bit boring. There are people, I presume they're, not inebriated by Bud Light or anything, but they truly think there's no inflation right now. They think the economy is doing great, which is horrifying. I don't know where they're working, probably government employees or on welfare. But like, again, just remove all, remove, remove emotionally, emotion, remove all emotion. Remove the names. Just look at the statistics. I mean, one has horrible inflation. And yet some people are like, eh, it's not that bad. It's just mind numbing. One of the top comments, I'm a little biased, but he's a good looking guy, so I'm gonna read this comment. Now, the Topping Show, again, hashtag at the Topping Show on X Twitter says, quote, it blows my mind that there are millions of people who are saying the economy is good and prices aren't bad. Now, granted, it wasn't the most liked one, but did get three people to like it. So, better friendly reminders actually like this video. Matt Hatler says, let's add this one to the mix for now. I don't know who this is from the meme, probably some celebrity he says, we did it, Joe. And it's a infographic of all the public stocks that crashed this week, which, uh, Yep, they're uh they're all doing pretty darn bad. And uh again, I'd say it's already always 2020. Definitely uh been a rough week. Scroll down, someone by name of I says, you forgot to mention that the inflation is the wor is worst in most other countries. Hmm, mention inflation is worst in most of the other countries. A little bit infographic really quick. I did get 13 likes. That's the as from the IMF 2024 inflation map. The fantastic Mister says you forgot to mention that most other countries are directed effect are directly affected by the U.S. Unquote. I got 27 likes. Sammy J says it's just the beginning, and people I'm just beginning to think people are stupid. Getting 79 likes. Dan Stewart says with numbers like this, and that even if you are already decided, you might want to reconsider if you're just an emotional liberal. Getting 34 likes. Yeah, going down more and more. Oh, people forget about this. Jim Gallagher has a picture of Biden as a gift, rather. It says, the Inflation Reduction Act will tackle inflation and reduce the deficit. That's what they were telling us. I still have yet to find a single small business owner or just any, anyone who works in corporate America who is positively affected by the Inflation Reduction Act. Granted, I'm a little biased. I, don't, I haven't worked with a lot of like a, you know, green energy companies or, well, not physically green because they lose money, but the cliche appearance of green companies but yeah hey do you know anyone who's positively affected by that inflate yeah ironically named it's a good rule of politics rather than name it it's usually the antithesis like the patriot act which is the most unpatriotic things they ever passed and stripped us a lot of a lot of constitutional constitutional rights and privacy yep and that did get 10 likes well let's see if there's any contrary comments gypsy says i'm sharing the crap out of this thanks getting 10 likes nah pretty much not a lot of, oh, is it? What? Okay, this, okay, this gal's gotta be a bot. Someone by the name of Sam, all she does is repost a picture of, like, the, it's the Tide logo, but it's been bastardized to say vote. It says removes orange, orange stubborn stains. She really doesn't read. She has to be a bot, because she says brilliant, but this doesn't make Biden look good, and her profile is all about Biden looking good. Like, I know, like, so we found a contrarian kind of comment. It's more of an advertising for a rudimentary looking t shirt, which, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, did we finally find what is this? I think we did find a contrarian statement. It's Miss Mealy. She says corporate greed and looks at the percentages of increase. I meant that's just hilarious because she has a sort and some grope. But, gosh, so mentally vacuous. And this represents a lot of people on LinkedIn too who don't do modicum of research. And she's talking about the price to the end user increasing. And the percent of prices. Yes, but the cost of goods sold, aka how much the product costs, increased at the same percentage. Again, mo it's one of the most infuriating things about people not doing modicum research, especially when they 
don't know business. Great time, I'm a little bit of a business nerd, so I go down the rabbit hole a lot. But in terms of one of the worst industries to ever invest in, and not financial advice, but is groceries. The average grocery profit margin is 2%, which for business is nothing. One bad call, you're, you're in a lot of trouble. You're in a lot of pain. It's why so many of these businesses like Walmart and Target are trying to offset, they try to get more profitable items like electronics, clothing, all that kind of stuff to offset the risk and the low margins. Groceries are much of a staple. A lot of people see them as commodities and they can buy anywhere, which is kind of true for many grocery products. But again, the good, most of these companies are publicly traded. You look at Kroger, you look at Walmart, you look at Target. You dive down into analytics, you dive down to the profit margins, it's about 2%. The prices have increased, but the profit is about the same. Not for every single one of these companies, but for the industry average. Just look up industry average of grocery stores. You'll see it's about 2%. And yet she's saying, oh yeah, the, the prices are up 40%. Yes, but so is the cost of goods sold. So do not let people use that BS argument. Every time someone brings up, maybe I'll make this whole segment of the show or a highlight of the show, like, contrarian moments or contrarian arguments and like, give me more feedback in the comments. It's already appreciated. But literally, if anyone says, oh yeah, these cor corporations are so greedy, they increase, I mean, groceries, I mean, groceries are 40, 50%. That's because the cost of goods sold have increased the, well, and if you feel so inclined, even show them the data, show them the 10K, show them the uh, quarterly reports of these publicly traded companies. Yes, but the profit margin is about the same. So no, it's not because these company corporations are evil because your policies are terrible and causing inflation. I went on a little bit of a little bit more bombastic than usual in that, but it's just so frustrating when there's so much disinformation. And again, if you want to win people's hearts and minds arguments, never be combative. Always ask them, be more inquisitive, be like, well, really, let's look at the data together. Do you think there's a certain, like maybe one product specifically is becoming, you know, more and more profitable. Let, let's look at the data together. Let, let's see. And again, you'll find that, oh yeah, it's about 2%, which again is really rough. And that's why, I mean, there's not a lot of startups in the grocery industry. A lot of them are legacy companies. And they have been growing number of stores, but that's why there's not a lot of startups in that industry to begin with. But I partially digress. I know I went a little bit um, overboard there, so to say. But yeah, let me know. How, do you know anyone who still doesn't think inflation is an issue? And then do you think inflation will be one of, if not the biggest topic for the upcoming election? Personally, I think it will. But of course, let me know in the comments. As always, be fascinating to hear what you have to say. Other interesting political news, you have the Trump foreshadowing the Kamala Harris buying stock crash. Well, that meme is going viral on the good old X Twitter. And of course, it comes from us from the most appropriate of all X Twitter profile names. The name is I am meme. And they'll ask their hashtag I meme zero. Their name is I am me I meme, therefore I am American emoji, American flag emoji. Now, they actually did a screenshot compilation of X or sorry, of uh, CNN business. First one comes from 2020 in which they say, quote, and this is, uh, oh, hilarious. Even better, it's from the same writer at CNN, which, granted, if Trump were to describe CNN, I'm sure he would say something of, yep, CNN is crap, fake news, oh, it's the fake news, the CNN, not even worth anything. CNN business, they aren't even hardly in business themselves, all the layoffs. But I, I, that is probably the worst Trump impression you hear all year, but hopefully the least made you smile a little bit. Now, again, this is from the same writer at CNN. Now, the first article is from 2020, in which it says, quote, Trump warns stock will disintegrate if he loses, but stocks are climbing as Biden pulls ahead. The next article is from February in 2024. Again, same writer, Matt Egan over at CNN says, quote, Trump warns market will crash if he loses. Investors just laugh. And then the last one, again, it's just Trump looking cliche uh, tough in his suit. The last one, he's smiling and says, quote, global stock markets plunge. Now, this one is by... Adam, oh, or the CNN headlines from Adam Goldman, Mark Thompson, Crystal Herr, and Aidit. So unfortunately, Matt Egan, maybe he lost his job at CNN. They did have uh, recent layoffs. So fascinatingly enough, um, yeah, it didn't really uh, be even better if he was the one that wrote it. And yet, it's been a, one of the worst weeks in stock history for Jap or for the Nikkei, Nikkei Index over in Japan. I believe it's actually the worst ever when it came to the trading day on Monday. And it was so bad, spoiler um, a lot of these stocks, uh, you couldn't actually trade because they, um, I don't know if it's a coincidence, but uh, the platform shut down for brokerages. It's uh, definitely not good news for those companies as well. And yeah, things are not looking good. And I was going to say, put another dollar in the Trump was right jar, especially when he said, oh yeah, Biden's campaign on a goal of ending fossil fuels and getting him out of business, gasoline will go up in price. Yep, they're uh, almost like the Alex Jones is right jar. You got to be uh, running out of room to put all those dollars in there these days. 
Again, pretty viral. Got 2 million views and 60,000 likes. Now, one of the first most popular comments comes from a dead president's show. Says Trump called it. These morons will blame him for the Biden Harris policies created, creating the stock market crash. Get 414 likes. Common sense custodian says, quote, amazing innocent, isn't it? How many times does Trump have to be right for people to realize he is spot on? How many times? I'm getting 764 likes. Well, they might be under the uh, DJ, was it uh, the Donald Trump derangement syndrome? It's a real thing. I, I'm partially kidding. Kind of. Mr. Mike Engelman says Trump was right again, getting 543 likes. Agent Self says eight of the 10 largest single day crashes occurred during Trump's president administration. That's coming with that statistic from. Their sources, do, 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 do. S&P, Dow Jones, indic, Indices. Looks like the balance is the creator of the chart, which, and again, you had the pandemic as well, which, again, that was a huge outlier. Going down, you also have, like I said, again, we do have a country in statement. Makes life a little bit more interesting. Echo chambers get a little bit boring. The meme master says, has a picture of a car upside down in a ditch saying stock market and Kamal Harris is standing up front says, we did it, Joe, getting 326 likes. Which, again, is unrealistic because if she were to actually be speaking, she'd probably say like, ha, 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 ha. We, we did it, Joe. We, Joe is what we did because what we did is it and it is what we did. Kamal Harris, probably. Got, again, 326 likes. Definitely need to work on my hyena laugh. The righty girl says, how many times are they going to eat crow before they just give up and say, start letting Trump do more morning segments? Getting 61 likes. Tabitha Connolly says, picture up. Who is this? It, we did it, Joe. <laughs> we did it. Oh, it is actually Kamala. I thought it was like a wash up celebrity in this little gift. And it's a picture of her and Trump, all the public trade companies where they're all in the red because their stock crashed. We did it. We did it, Joe. <laughs> That got 205 likes. Rolling down more and more. Uh, got like M2014. The CNN says the opposite of what we report is the truth. Getting eight likes. Deep State Illuminate says, meanwhile, it says the Dow Jones industrial average down 2.82%, gaining 27 likes. Here, here. Bedard Glazer, can't pronounce that, or that's how it's spelled, says, quote, he just took credit for the stock market like a week ago, gave him 47 likes. Let's see here. Yeah, a lot of folks are rated, but the stock crashing like a rock or a Boeing airplane, some might, yeah, yeah, some might. Some might say the stock crashed like a Boeing airplane right into the ground. We need to make more parachutes, preferably American made. So yeah, it's a, and you also have Kamala crashing, trending on Twitter. Uh, not looking good. And again, not financial advice. Shoot. Timing is half of everything in life. If, you had perfect, if I had perfect timing, that's what I'd do. I'd, I'd play more in the stock market. Yep, uh, not so much with me. But, I mean, a lot of people quarrel. Do you think this will be a big driver of the 24-hour election? I mean, I think personally, in terms of the top topics that are affecting most Americans, well, that they care about, because some of them, little outliers. I think it's going to be illegal immigration. That's going to be one of the top ones. We're going to have the unemployment rate going to be one of the top ones. Inflation is going to be one of the top ones. Uh, for women, even though, again, it's on a state level, not a federal level, you have Kamala Harris saying abortion. That's going to, And that will be a big driver for the upcoming 2024 election. They're still raising money on it, left and right, even though, again, it's been relegated to the states, but they want to lie and say they can change it. I think those are going to be the probably four top... Eh, Probably one of some of the top topics out there, but let me know. I mean, a lot of people, well, it doesn't matter who's in power. Usually, when the economy's bad, usually they'll vote for their side if they're more of the independent or the middle voters. But let me know in the comments. As always, be fascinating to hear what you have to say. Uh, going over to the business blood of the day, you have uh, Charles Schwab, uh, Fidelity, uh, they had a little outage again earlier this week. Which, uh, yeah, if I were a shareholder of Charles Schwab, I would be so irate. Because again, they're losing money. Because people can't transact their trades. They can't buy or sell stocks or CDs or DVDs or they sell. Finance joke, kind of. And this happened earlier this year as well. And one of the top days when people are trading, buying and selling stocks. Yeah, Charles Schwab, that nice error goes, oh yeah, we don't know what's going on. Really? Again? Who's... I should give him a cold call. Who is doing your IT? Uh, outages? 
that's it's amateur hour. There's your tech company, your your finance company, but how is your business transact transacted through tech? Now, this brought to us thanks to Yahoo Finance, the original OG search engine, in which they say, quote, Traub, Traub, Fidelity, and other trading brokers appear to have broke during a huge market sell-off. And this is specifically uh, from the Associated Press. And they say, quote, oh, where's the cool picture? Disappointing Yahoo Finance is not a cool picture of Charles Schwab or anything like that. In fact, let's go to the, uh, let me pull up the other infographic. This is over. Give me New York a minute here. There was an infographic. One of my favorite websites, not paid endorsement or anything, is uh, downdetector.com. And they'll actually show you all the sites that are being unable to reach. And if you click the details, they'll show you the issues either related to, you know, the web face, your phone inter app interface, or some of you go down to the, to the granular level of servers. Now, go ahead and I'll pull up this fun little meme on X Twitter. It's from the Kobayashi. says, Breaking has been past 1.5 hours since the market opened, and users at Schwab, Vanguard, Fidelity, Ameritrade, and E-Trade are still unable to access their accounts. Also under attack, or I don't know, under attack, outages, suspicious. Also UPS, interestingly enough. You also have CenturyLink, which is an ISP for many people, including data centers. Or also an internet service provider, same with Lumen. And uh, yeah, all the major top trading platforms, outages. And they basically print money for a living like a bank. I find it fascinating that they didn't have the right resource allocation, like right, you know, load balancers on the servers, or they didn't have the right capacity on you know, circuits. I want to say it. I, I'm just very skeptical that that's the actual reason. Actually, I'll keep that fun infographic up while I read. Eh. Yeah, while I read the article, give you a couple notes here. They say, "quote Users reported appearing at peak around 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Data from Dow Detector shows." Some frustrating customers said that they were unable to log in or access their account balances. Charles Schwab said on posting uh, social media, said, quote, due to a technical issue, some clients have difficulty logging into the Schwab platforms. Please accept our apologies as our team works to resolve this issue as quickly as possible. Yeah. Imagine, imagine when, again, not financial advice, but a lot of people, they like to buy low, sell high. That's kind of the cliche that we've heard since we were first told about investing. Some people, not, I mean, not financial advice, can I say it again? Because it's the United States for all litigation. Some people are seeing the big, you know, they saw the market crash on Monday, thought maybe this is the lowest it's going to go. Maybe I want to buy now. Imagine trying to log in and it doesn't work. And they also said, as Fidelity spokesperson said, quote, they're having, quote, intermittent, intermittent issues earlier, but it'll not be, resol it'll be resolved soon. They said at peak, Charles Schwab nearly 15,000 outage reports from users at 9 a.m. Eastern time per down detector. That's just at one website of people self-reporting. They say Fidelity and Vanguard also saw another 3,800 and 2,900 respectively, closer to 10 a.m. Eastern Time. User report appeared to fall noticeably on all three platforms about an hour later. But again, when you're talking about trading stocks, I mean, in terms of the importance of the platform and how quickly these things are executed and how much, how, I mean, time being met is important. I mean, you have people move across the country business operations so they can gain one second advantage of other, other brokers' traders. It gets really granular. It's fascinating as well. And yet, yeah, these people are down for hours. You couldn't, you can't log in for hours. That is terrible. And again, this issue has happened before in terms of an outage, being unable to access it. Now, a lot of people are speculating maybe the one earlier in the year, maybe it was a cyber issue, maybe, maybe it was a misconfiguration again. But this is not the first time. And again, as a company that you're, most of the business for those of these brokerage firms these days. Are transacted online through their app, through their web, or their app, or their websites. If you go into their store, into their storefront, you could use their wireless access point, though for security, I would recommend using a hotspot. But you could use their app as well, being a wireless access point. But they couldn't trade, which again, is the one thing this these companies are supposed to be doing, and it's been happening more and more. So the fact that they couldn't trade on one of the most important trading days of the year, I gotta say that is certainly the business blunder of the day. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in. Again, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you could click that button, I'd really appreciate it. Also give me a thumbs up or thumbs down or a comment is a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know how I can make sure it better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone, just stay safe, fight the good fight.